This video is about the conservation applications of LIDAR data. It is part of a workshop funded by the Minnesota Environment and Natural Resources Trust Fund <clears throat> and it's presented by the University of Minnesota in cooperation with the Water Resources Conference. We collaborated with the Board of Water and Soil Resources, the NRCS, and the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources. These conservation applications of LIDAR data are presented in a series of training modules. This section is part, the very last part, of the basics of using LIDAR data. <clears throat> this being the very last part of Lecture 3, uh, where we discuss LIDAR data applications and its products, and in particular we discuss the visualization of that LIDAR data. In this regard, we want to cr uh, cr uh, credit Tim Lesh from the uh, Minnesota DNR for his good work in preparing this material. LIDAR data can be visualized in a number of different ways. <clears throat> the shaded relief, which helps us examine the detail for data validation, look for anomalies or errors, is, <clears throat> is actually visualizing a surface which is derived from the point cloud. Whereas we could visualize the three-dimensionally the, <clears throat> the point cloud data um, and look at cross-sections uh, for another form of visualization and other, another form uh, we could visualize that would help us in visualization would be contour, generating contours, which help us uh, in visualize in a different way the, the surface. And that is, again, a derived surface after it's been processed through, from the point cloud to the DEM. And the triangulated irregular network is another way we can visualize the data, which is <clears throat> also a way of storing the information that's derived from the point cloud. So there's several different ways, we, and we'll talk through these. This is the, the surface uh, of, uh, or an image of the surface in southern Minnesota, where there's a road on the left and a stream running from the upper right to the lower left uh, within an agricultural area. And if we use the elevation data, you can very easily see that there is a lot more information revealed about the, the various roads, the drainage surfaces, uh, the riparian areas along the stream. You get an idea from the, the, uh, the two-dimensional to the three-dimensional. It re reveals a, a lot, a rich source of information. <clears throat> now the three-dimensional is bringing in the Z or the elevation uh, of both the landscape as well as the vegetation. And that's part of the LIDAR process. We're measuring the ground and then everything above the ground to help us better understand the features on the landscape. An example of those features that we would be able to uh, under, better understand would be a sinkhole or those features in the landscape where there's a very uh, extreme depression uh, that's an anomaly <clears throat> within, a, within a field, a remnant of a glacier glaciation, and that these sinkholes are, uh, would be uh, something that we might not be able to see using other sources or coarse uh, elevation models. And here's an example of this sinkhole uh, in the 206 uh, air photo that we're going to be talking about. So this is the particular sinkhole, the yellow dot, and this is where it exists on the farm field in the uh, upper uh, left of that section. <clears throat> And this is what the sinkhole looks like on the landscape, uh, a depression that might be a remnant of a glacier or might be some sort of change in the, the underlying substructure which collapsed, uh, and that it presents a, a problem for the, for the farmer in terms of farming that field, but it's a feature that might not be revealed uh, unless we have a fairly fine um, level of detail about the elevation. And another way we can examine that feature, or features like that, would be using a profile graph. And if we're drawing a, a line on the screen using the three-dimensional tool within ArcGIS, we'd be able to see the change in elevation from the flat area at 374 meters uh, to the 368 at the, at the center of that sinkhole, uh, and then back up to the low side off to the east on the, at about uh, 372. This is another example of visualization. Here the point cloud data, which is both the, the bare ground as well as the above ground features, 
are classified by color so that we're able to use the color to see the very high elevations, those that are very tall, and the yellow for the mid and the green for the bare ground uh, features. So the color helps us uh, visualize the, the data in one way. And you get an idea there's a row of trees on the right and a clump of trees on the left and some sort of building structure in the center. Now if we were to visualize this uh, in uh, Arcsine uh, or the LAS viewer tools, we would be able to uh, see those point clouds still colored where the red is the very high, uh, highest features in the landscape and the green being the lowest, but that we get a little idea of, uh, a little better idea of what the features are on the landscape. But the color still helps us and now we're starting to see that three-dimensional uh, uh, feature. Now if we, we take this step a little bit further uh, and we take those features and we start modeling those shapes in Arcsine, uh, we're able to, uh, to get a much better idea of what those features are. And you can see that there is in the center a building that's connected with some sort of corridor uh, structures between uh, uh, build those five building shapes there that are connected. And there's little dots out on the green around in the landscape as well as trees uh, on the east and the west. Now if we drape this over the, those points, over the aerial image, we're getting a little better idea of what's going on and we can see that those, those shapes out in the green were actually then cars uh, that were being picked up in the, uh, by the LIDAR. And you can see that they're, they're above the bare ground but they're not very large and they're very distinct shapes. And, but, but putting those points over the picture you get a much better idea of what's, uh, what's in the landscape. Now if we take our modeled surface, our 3D Arcsine uh, model surface, over and we impose the image, the aerial image on top of it, we can get an even a better, more fully rep, um, un, you know, realized uh, visualization of our data. So you're getting a little idea that by using this elevation data and merging it with other surfaces, uh, that being aerial imagery and modeling of those uh, 3D shapes that we're able to really get a pretty clear idea of what's on, uh, what's under, what's on the ground. Now this is the point cloud data and another thing that we do with the point cloud data is that we, we determine what's a building and that we then uh, extract those features from the, the point cloud and uh, put them into their own special class or their own special shape file, their own special layer so that we're able to bring out and say what's the bare, what's the bare ground, what's the buildings, uh, what are the vegetation, the above ground, uh, non-buildings. And we're able to help by, by extracting and then classifying them in groups. Uh, and then we're able to, and this is the cross section on the right, you're, you're seeing the, uh, this river, uh, the sinuous river, uh, as well as the, uh, the road above it. You're able to get a little idea of the, the uh, profile from the side. We're able to see the vegetation, that there's, there's river uh, and that there's vegetation on either side of that river and the, the red being the very tall and the green, yellow being middle and green being the lower vegetation. And so you get a little idea of visualizing it from the side uh, helps you understand what's on the landscape. Whereas if we were looking straight down, uh, we would understand there's vegetation there and there's a river there, but we wouldn't have any idea of where the, the, uh, how the vegetation was composed. Um, now this is another type of visualization where the point cloud is, uh, is uh, visualized in a 3D uh, viewer uh, that helps us understand that unique structure. And, and this is the, uh, the lift bridge in uh, Duluth and I think you'll get a little idea of, of how, um, uh, how detailed the point cloud data can be. Now there, this image has been processed quite a bit. Uh, areas have been uh, removed around it to, f to help us focus in on just the lift bridge and the, uh, the building structure to the left. But you get an idea of how that elevation viewed at a, from a perspective would be very, very useful. 
Now here's another structure that is uh, overlain with uh, the uh, the aerial imagery and we're using colors again to represent the different elevation but by bringing the the uh, the aerial imagery together with the point cloud we're able to really very very detailed uh, to a very detailed level to model that landscape and help us understand and you can see the ship coming into the the canal there that the the, uh, the ore boat <clears throat> and you get a very detailed idea of what's happening in the land now this scene is a uh, uh, part of experimental <clears throat> aspect of LIDAR where we're looking at the water penetrating LIDAR. There's, there's uh, some LIDAR uh, that's able to penetrate water uh, at least to a certain depth of, of uh, 80 or 90 meters. And this is the north shore of Lake Superior where we're where on a clear still day we're penetrating the water to observe the bathymetry or the features that are on uh, on below the surface of the water at least to a certain level <clears throat> and it, it really helps us understand uh, not just the above ground but in this case with the the this special lidar the water penetrating lidar in in this image we're merging that with the traditional lidar and we're also using the the colors to help us represent the different uh, elevation um, now, this is a, another way of visualizing, and that would be contour. So that if we take our uh, LIDAR information and we create a, a, a digital elevation model, uh, then from that elevation model we're able to create contours, and that is lines of equal elevation or ISO, li uh, ISO lines, and that, that helps us understand the landscape a little more or visualize that landscape a little more. And you can see that the excavator is digging there at the, at the very bottom of uh, a, a feature in the landscape, but you can see there's there's a ravine or a, a structure, a little creek bed uh, that is just to the northwest of that excavator, and you you get a little idea of <clears throat> where that is. And if we were examining the aerial imagery, it wouldn't be as clear. Uh, we really benefit from the contour information as an additional form of visualization. We'd like to credit and acknowledge the following people for their contributions to this material.